Okay, welcome back. Intro to Technology 1023. We're going to be talking about networking today. Now, before we get started here, networking is an incredibly large topic, and we have multiple courses that go into all of these things that we're about to cover in more detail, where we're going to practice those significantly more. So I do not expect you to be experts after we go over this. I really just want you to be able to recall that these things exist much like all the other things that we have covered up to this point now with that said we will definitely have opportunity to practice to make sure that some of these uh, concepts stick but overall don't worry too much about memorizing everything uh, we i don't even have a portion in this course to test you on this so it's definitely about exposure here and it's definitely about being able to recall this information when you need it all right and you'll never know when you actually need it so let's start with the basic one so a lot of people coming up through now have mistaken Wi-Fi for internet. And it's not necessarily your fault or the, the people that are coming up through their fault. Uh, it's largely a marketing problem. It's largely when you talk to your Spectrum representative or Time Warner representative that they're going to say, make sure that you have Wi-Fi. No, that's not how that works, all right? so. We'll go over to what Wi-Fi actually is, but the reason why that came up here is because what that Spectrum representative is trying to say is check to see if you actually have internet. Can you get out of what is known as a LAN? Can you access what is known as a WAN? Okay, that is the internet. So the internet, by definition, is any time that you send data into a public network, okay? So if you are accessing google.com to search or you're going to Facebook or Instagram, whatever, it doesn't really matter. <clears throat> the fact that your information and your request has to go out to the ISP, which is a public service, which runs on public computers and routers and switches, that is the internet. And the original intent of the internet was to connect a bunch of computers in a what is known as a network so you can actually share information. That is what the internet is. The intranet is a very similar concept. We're still connecting computers, but it's on a private network. It's information that stays typically with a company or a residential location like your house, okay? So just to, to reiterate on this, internet is a series of connected devices with at least one public network, okay? One public router going to the ISP, okay? The intranet is a public or a private network, okay? So I want to focus on two things here. I'm going to show you the rest of them. I'm going to go over them real quick, but you need to focus on two here. The first one is LAN, local area network, and then WAN, wide area network. So a LAN is what you typically have in your house, your, your Wi-Fi mesh or your cable connected devices. They're all your devices. It is a private network. That is your house that is local to you. Okay. And then WAN, a wide area network. So this is your public network. This is synonymous with internet typically. All right. The, the, the a WAN is a public network. So these other options here, you're definitely going to go over in the other networking courses if you're going down that path. But PAN, personal area network, think Bluetooth, think uh, device to device, campus area network. So if you have between Alfred State and then SUNY Morrisville, uh, which is under the SUNY umbrella, you can have a campus network there and you would uh, do that through a VPN. So you would have a private, privatized connection between the two schools uh, through a tunnel, okay? Uh, metropolitan, okay? 
Oh, I, I got that wrong. So campus area network is between buildings and then um, metropolitan area network is between campuses. My mistake. Okay, switch. One of the, actually let's back up a little bit. Originally speaking on your networks, this device used to be called a hub. And what a hub did was it takes information from the router and then sends out that information on all of the ports. Uh, that is very inefficient. It's also not very secure from a uh, digital standpoint. So a switch replaced that. And the way that they did that is on MAC addresses. So when you plug in your computer or you get into a uh, Wi-Fi network uh, that is connected to a switch, that device has to uh, request information. Once that information is requested from the switch and it is not known on that switch, it will be added to the MAC address table. So that MAC address, a MAC address in general, allows for a device to be identified. It is the identification of the device, period. Okay. So when a switch gets a, a packet from the router, the, the information that is on that packet will have a MAC address to it. Uh, and then it will send that packet to the correct device. If in the event that the address, the MAC address is not found in the uh, table, it will, it will act like a hub and send out a message to everyone going, is this you? And if there's a uh, device on the network that hasn't requested any information yet, and they happen to be there, uh, it will say, yes, this is me, send it to me. And then that device will get added to the MAC address table. So it doesn't have to continuously do that. Okay. If the address is not found on the router, so this is more typical if you are, uh, so if I have my phone here and I'm on my Wi-Fi network and I'm trying to go out to Facebook, uh, I don't have Facebook on my local network or on that switch. That switch will go, okay, well, it's not here. I'm going to send it to the router, which would be known as the gateway. All right. So generally speaking, the wrap up on this page, a switch allows for, uh, packet delivery based on a MAC address. A router is a device that allows you to uh, send packets to different networks. So once you're outside of your network or you have different networks within like a campus that we were talking about uh, not too long ago, uh, at Alfred State here, we have a router per building. So if you wanted to go from the engineering building to the business building, that is technically a different network. It's obviously within the Alfred State domain and that umbrella, but that is technically a different network. So a router to router, you're switching networks. Okay. This is based on IPs. So if you're trying to go from the engineering building to the business building, that IP is going to be what you're addressing. Okay. So just the, the wrap up here, a router allows you to switch between networks. All right. Access points. This is where we start to clear up what Wi-Fi actually is. So Wi-Fi is just radio waves. It is a way for wireless devices to connect to a network. That's it. It does not equal internet. It does not mean anything. Your microwave produces radio waves. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Okay. It's just a way of connecting to a network. So when we start talking about access points, we are talking about the Wi-Fi router that you are used to. It's just a little bit more precise of a term because it is an access point. That is exactly what it does. So an access point is a device that allows wireless devices to connect to a network. Most people know this as Wi-Fi. Traditionally, Wi-Fi standards have been 802.11 notations. This has changed with Wi-Fi 6. And then retroactively, uh, the government agency has uh, went Wi-Fi 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So traditionally, and you're going to see this in probably most of your networking uh, certification exams as well, where you're going to have to know the 802.11 notation. So the first one is B and uh, G, A, A, C, and A, X. A, X is Wi-Fi 6. Okay. Uh, most of you are used to 
802.11a, which is five gigahertz, and then 802.11b, which was the reg original, which is 2.4 gigahertz, uh, and then the little bit more special ones, NG and AC. Well, AC is pretty common as well, but N and G were relatively uh, specialized for the time and have been replaced by AC. Okay. MAC addresses. They are attached to the NIC card of the device. Um, you have the OUI, which is the organizational uh, unique identifier. So this is if HP made it or NVIDIA made it with Millinox. If they made it, that's what that uh, ID is going to be. The other half of it, which is a 24-bit of it, is the extension identifier itself. So the device itself. So if this thing was made, this NIC card was made by Mellanox, the other 24 bits is going to be the serial identification of that individual NIC card. And the reason why we have to do it like this is because when you add uh, network cards to servers, you, you have multiple IDs and MAC addresses. Um, on the consumer end, this is going to be built into the device itself, most likely on the motherboard. So if if you're making a, uh, even if you get it from like Apple, you're going to have your Apple identifier, and then you're going to have the serial number based on that NIC card. So that's going to determine your MAC address uh, for the the device itself. This goes for custom computing as well. They, everything has a MAC address. IPv4. Been around for a long time. If you remember our conversation about uh, computing history and network history at the end of that presentation, been around since basically the beginning. It's been around for a long, long time. Okay. So total addresses is two to 30 second power. Okay. And traditionally speaking, we've had IP classes. Now, again, in drill technology course, you don't need to understand these fully, just understand that they exist. Uh, class A, B, C, and D. Uh, the one that you're used to is C, because that is the uh, 192.168.1.1, uh, which is almost always your home network, uh, and it is a private IP address, but everything else, if you want a public IP address, uh, is going to fall under one of these classes. All right. So one thing I do want to uh, call out is classy. Uh, unless you're working for IEEE, you're probably never going to be in this range, but it's reserved for research and development. So if you end up seeing this, either you're getting attacked by some sort of a spoof or you work for IEEE. All right, IPv6 is 128 bits. Total addresses is 2 to 128th power. Okay, so IPv6 was created because we ran out of IPv4 addresses very, very quickly. Um, and that's going to continue to get worse, especially with uh, IoT devices coming online and smart homes and everything else. So we're going to have tons and tons of devices on the internet at all times. Okay, so this is typically written in hexadecimal. Uh, we won't be getting into that uh, for this course, your upper level networking course as you will. Okay, uh, one of the things that's special about IPv6, besides we have a lot more of them, is that we have so many that we can actually uh, assign these addresses to uh, locations on Earth, geographical areas. So this is really helpful for cybersecurity stuff where if we think that Russia or China is doing something or the same thing with Russia and China, if they think America is doing something, uh, they'll have a, a better idea uh, of where that uh, a cyber attack is coming from. Uh, but this can still be spoofed. <laughs> it's still pretty easy to get around that problem. But the intent was, hey, w this is coming from China. Why is it coming from China? type of idea. Okay. Overall, um, in most cases, this has been automated. Uh, I haven't seen too many courses yet uh, that strictly use IPv6. Uh, hasn't happened yet. And a bunch of the 
legacy software that we still have around is IPv4. So uh, it's going to take a little while for this to take hold and mainstream and where you actually have to understand it thoroughly, uh, but it's going to take a while. Okay. Cables. I'm going to burn through this because it is not super important for this course. However, I do want to call out RJ45, which is your typical Ethernet standard. Okay, uh, your Ethernet standard can easily provide power to devices. That's mostly how your access points work. Okay, <clears throat> and you have two types of Ethernet cables, UTP, unshielded twisted pair, and then shielded twisted pair. Uh, shielded twisted pair limits EMI interference. So if you have to run something over, say, lights, uh, you're going to need twisted shielded pair. Uh, but other than that, most of the time, especially consumer stuff, is going to be UTP. All right. Off to the right is your standard and speeds. Okay. So for the most of you, uh, you guys are on gigabit, so Cat 5e. Um, if you have a 10 gigabit network like I do, uh, I have a bunch of Cat 6 cables running around. Yeah. And then uh, PoE standards as well. So how much power do you need? There's your PoE standards. Uh, one note uh, that is here on the slide that I did forget to mention that one of the things that companies have to deal with is that the shielding on your uh, Ethernet cables, if they happen to be burnt or melted in any way, uh, it's toxic. So because we have air conditioning units and central air going to our server rooms most of the time, you have to use special types of Ethernet cables inside of those rooms because if there is ever a fire in there, melting those cables is going to be toxic to uh, the people in the building. So not a great scenario, but there is ways around that problem. Okay, fiber optic. So these cables are made of glass. The primary advantage of this is uh, latency where you don't have nearly as much latency because you're going to have the speed of light instead of the speed of electricity. And then you can have significantly more throughput. So fiber optic cables are the ones that are run across the sea floor. So we can communicate between an entire continent. Uh, and then you don't have the, the crazy amount of latency that you would with something like satellites, uh, which would have to travel significantly farther. Okay, that's basically all I wanted to say here for fiber optic cable. Uh, everything else is going to be covered in your advanced level networking courses. But again, just understand that there's a difference between a copper cable, which is typically Ethernet, and a fiber optic cable, which is obviously the fiber optic connector, but is made of glass. So the, it, the medium inside of that cable is significantly different. And that's where the differences come from. All right, so here are your primary networking protocols, the, the easy ones at least. Okay, so we have HTTP and HTTPS. So this is what you use on the web basically for everything. There are rare cases where that is not the case. Okay, DNS, uh, domain name server, convert a readable, understandable name into an IP IPv4 address. So google.com converts into 10.3.5.8, something like that. Uh, NTP, network time protocol, this is uh, necessary to synchronize networks. Uh, DHCP, uh, this gives out IP addresses to devices that are on the network automatically. You do not want uh, technicians doing this manually, although you can. Uh, it just depends, like servers typically have static IP addresses, but other than that, you want dynamic access to IPs. Uh, FTP, 20 and 21, uh, largely not used anymore. It's not even supported by browsers anymore. Uh, SMB, server message block. So this is your network share protocols, which is uh, very cool and people use it significantly. Uh, and then there's a, uh, NFS for the, the Linux protocol, same thing, just faster and for Linux, then SSH, Secure Shell. Those are your primary protocols for networking. There's a bunch of them, but. Hi all, in today's video, we'll talk about. Okay, so 
Again, with the videos, uh, I'm not going to trigger a copyright strike for these people. So they have to go through and go, oh, yeah, this is actually just a lecture. Um, with that said, that was a lot of information, and I can almost guarantee you don't fully understand it. It's one of those things I want you to be able to recall and research when you actually need that information. Um, your networking courses are going to go over this more significantly more where you're actually going to have to practice it. Uh, and then if you are an Alpha State student, you will be going through a couple of practical exercises, uh, more than likely with connecting Wi-Fi routers together and switches and connecting devices and making your own LAN. But yeah, with that said, uh, that's, that's why we're going to that type of level. We're not going to do anything else. We're not going to inject any type of server connections or services or any anything like that. We're relatively simple so you guys can understand the, the differences. So that's going to do it for the networking portion of this. Uh, we are wrapping up this course relatively quickly. Uh, we have a couple more left here. So yeah, there, there's really nothing else that I should say here, but just understand that this was a lot of information very quickly. I don't expect you to remember it. So with that said, I'll see you in the next one.